Butler said, quote, when McCarthy finally reached the president on January 6th and asked him to publicly and forcefully call off the riot, the president initially repeated the falsehood that it was Antifa that had breached the Capitol. McCarthy refuted that and told the president that these were Trump supporters. That's when, according to McCarthy, the president said, well, Kevin, I guess these people are more upset about the election than you are. And again, that's coming from a Republican. Herrera Butler stood to gain nothing by revealing this information. If anything, she had every reason not to reveal it, considering this is effectively an invitation for excommunication from her own party. But she revealed it because it happened, even though it's clear Kevin McCarthy has every intention of denying reality to protect Donald Trump. And by the way, this isn't the first time that McCarthy has done exactly that. Here he is in the immediate aftermath of the insurrection. That doesn't mean the president is free from fault. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. These facts require immediate action by President Trump. Accept his share of responsibility. Quell the brewing unrest. And ensure President-elect Biden is able to successfully begin his term. Pretty strong words, which makes it all the more pathetic and transparent when McCarthy then comes out a few months later and says this. Well, first of all, the conference will decide, but I don't think anybody is questioning the legitimacy of the presidential election. I think that is all over with. We're sitting here with the president today. Um, so from that point of view, I don't think that's a problem. Why the sudden change of heart? Because McCarthy stands for nothing other than political opportunism. And so while it was popular to condemn Trump in the wake of the insurrection, it's now unpopular to condemn Trump given the GOP's coordinated effort to rewrite history and make him the victim instead of the perpetrator. Kevin McCarthy isn't upholding any morals or values. He is a human kite blowing any which way the wind takes him. And by the way, taking a step back here and looking at this from a strategic point of view, Leave it to the Republican Party to wage an all-out assault on Liz Cheney for her crime of acknowledging objective reality that the election wasn't stolen, thereby effectively making her a martyr and giving her the biggest microphone in the GOP. I mean, think about it. They didn't have to do this. But because the only thing that party stands for is fealty to a one-term failed president, they decided to oust Liz Cheney from leadership, meaning that her message would be amplified leagues more than if they'd just done nothing and accepted reality. I'm not saying the GOP is a strategic disaster, but... Yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. And yet, what's new? The GOP has already proven, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that its only strategy is kowtowing to Trump. There's no legislative agenda, there's no governing philosophies. It's Trump says jump, we say how high. The party literally didn't even have a platform at its convention. Its platform was just, yeah, whatever errant synapse fires in Donald Trump's brain and falls out of his face, that's our position. We stand for that. But sure, very serious political party. Got it. And so look, whether it's Kevin McCarthy or Elise Stefanik or any of the other rubber stamps for Donald Trump, what's clear is that the GOP is now here governing or passing legislation or trying to make the lives of their constituents better. They're here consolidating power for themselves. That is the whole point of the big lie. They know they can't win on their platform, which would suggest they had a platform in the first place. And so instead, they've just decided that they're going to restrict the rights to vote so that those who would otherwise vote them out of office just can't vote at all. When they go all in on this strategy like they have by introducing over 350 voter suppression bills around the country, that is a tacit admission that they've failed. That's them saying, we know we can't win your votes with our agenda, and so instead, we're just going to decide who gets to cast votes. Let's be honest here, we all know exactly what we'd call this if it was happening in another country. This is what a failed party looks like, and we're seeing its demise in real time. To see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe.